Good evening and welcome to Newsnight tonight. My name is Charles Odongtho and uh, of course, as usual, I'm with the old man of the clan. Which clan, by the way, Andrew? All the clans of this continent of, of Africa. Of Kampala or of Uganda? All the clans of Africa. I am there. Now, quickly, Andrew Mwenda is uh, an analyst in the region, a journalist. He is the managing director of the independent magazine. And of course, like he says, he's the old man of the clan. Andrew, it's good to have you back. Thank you. Now, Andrew, last week we, we had a discussion here. You had a discussion with Morris, actually, and uh, on the death of Karegea, the issue in Rwanda. And uh, South Africa, where he was found dead, uh, said there was supposed to be an investigation. But that investigation, we don't know how far it has gone. But of course, there are things that have happened. The latest that is interesting to read is the Foreign Affairs Minister, Louis, and uh, she says Rwanda is not going to lose sleep over its enemies. What do you make of that? Well, I do not know whether you know, and I did say it in the show last time, that Patrick Karajaya had gone on television and openly declared war against the government of Rwanda. I do not know whether you know that. He also did an interview with the, the Observer newspaper where he said... That's Karegea? Th yes. Patrick, the late. Yes, Patrick, yes. And he said that dictators do not leave power. They are kicked out of power. I have also seen a statement from Mr. Teogen Rudasingwa, who used to be a very good friend of mine, he used to be Shaje de Cabinet in Rwanda, saying As that... As you talk that, because this is mm. Uganda, some, probably some of us do not know this This I'm explaining. Teogen so Rudasingwa used are. to be Shaje de Cabinet. Charge in the charge of cabinet. Chief that is like yes. the prime minister. Director of cabinet. No, director of cabinet in Rwanda. Secretary and to cabinet. Yes, now he's a member of the Rwanda National Congress and he said Karajaya was a soldier. He was involved in the fighting of the government of Rwanda and he has died in battle. So, and then you can clearly see from that history is that Patrick Karajaya was involved in anti government activities of a violent nature. The government of Rwanda accuses him of terrorism that he was the one masterminding the grenade attacks that happened in Chigali in 2010, 2011. The Foreign Affairs Minister says the, so he as well. He has been accused of being the sponsor of the rebellion in Eastern Congo and being an ally of FDLR. So I am sure that he, when Bin Laden died, the government of the United States did not shed much, much tears. And any government that faces an opponent who is armed and willing to kill to achieve their political objectives, I do not know whether any government would do shed tears over the no, death Andrew, of a that person they perceive that way. Is that to say, because that is not coming out officially, because I have tried to check and there is no, no the, official uh, it, confirmation. Those are official government people making those statements. Can we take that to be the official Rwanda position that Karegea died in battle? I should tell you this. Louise Mushichuabo is, the, the, foreign is the foreign affairs minister of Rwanda, but not only that, and she's so also the diplomat for, she's, she's, that she's, for Rwanda. She's also the no, she's actually also the official government spokesperson for Rwanda. So I would uh, imagine that it is difficult to separate her words from her duties as spokesperson of the government and as minister of foreign affairs. Beautiful. Now that takes me to the next question: the issue of peace for Rwanda, peace in the region, peace mm -hmm. for Uganda, peace, the issue of Democratic Republic of Congo, Eastern Congo. In light of this Karegea death, and of course we have so many dissidents running away from mm. Kigali, and then of course becoming enemies. Nyamwasa is still one of them, the one mm. who was shot some time ago in, in South Africa. That report of investigation has not yet been found. How, where does this leave the peace in Rwanda? Is it possible for mm. President Kagame to bring together the Rwandese, the Rwandan people, and say, we are working for a country and whether you disagree as opponents, political opponents, political opposition, that Rwanda should be first. Is it possible in light of this? I should tell you that the, the constitution of Rwanda states that any political party, regardless of the number of votes it secures in an election, even if it's 100%, it can never take more than 50% of cabinet. Yeah. Did you know that? So in Rwanda, they have a government of national unity. True. 50% of the cabinet positions of Rwanda are occupied by opposition political parties and independents, not by the RPF, mm -hmm. even though the RPF won 75% of the vote. Two, the Rwandan constitution says once the president, of the, once the president comes from one political party, mm -hmm. the speaker of parliament cannot come from the same political party. Yeah. So automatically, unlike in Uganda where you have the speaker and the president coming from the same place the same and party. the cabinet being composed of one party, 
in Rwanda, the Speaker of Parliament and the President of the Republic cannot come from the same party. In fact, to take it even further, beyond the confines of the Constitution, for the last uh, 18 years in Rwanda, the Speaker of Parliament came from a different party, the Speaker of the Senate or the President of the Senate came from a different party, the Prime Minister came from a different party, and the President from a different party. So you had four top executives coming from four different political parties. Today, the President of the Senate, the Speaker of Parliament, and the President of the Republic are from different parties. In the last two years, it's the only time that the President and the Prime Minister have come from the same political party. So if you are saying that people who disagree with President Kagame don't live in Rwanda, you may need to go on Rwanda and find that they actually have something called the National Political Parties Forum, mm -hmm. yeah. where all the 12 political parties are free, voluntarily, to be members, and as members, they can discuss how they can advance the national political agenda forward. And all decisions, by the way, in that forum uh, have to be achieved by, via consensus. Yeah. If they don't agree, they will have another meeting and another meeting. They don't vote. It has to be achieved by consensus. So RPF, although it enjoys a dominant political position, it has never used that position to uh, uh, eliminate or to settle in others from sharing power or from defining national policy. Granted, Andrew. So it's not true. Let, let me finish this way. Yeah. It's not true, uh, Charles, as most people think, that the Rwanda government is hostile to opposition. In fact, the government of Rwanda is so accommodating of opposition that it shares power with them. But Both formally in the state and informally in the political parties forum. That's, that's good to know because those details speak mm. for, should speak for themselves but as we see in the case of Rwanda currently, they're mm. not speaking for themselves. The, the, the perception that we get of Rwanda currently, of mm. President Kagame, who you know very well mm. and you, have, you, you, you advise him by the way. You I sit on the Presidential him. Advisory Council of President very Kagame. Good. Do you share with him this perception in the region in a capital like Kampala here, mm. that the perception that people get of you is of an egocentric man, of a man who does not want to live with people who disagree with him, of a man who wants to have all power unto himself, and that that is probably going to cause a problem for this region, for Rwanda, and mm. that the peace that he fought for, the peace that people like Rijema died for in 94, that might not be achieved if what we are seeing is going on. Actually, Chester, I should tell you this. One of the reasons why I sit on the Presidential Advisory Council of President Paul Kagame is because me and him disagree on many things. So I sit there But it doesn't take you to be a legitimate threat because he knows that, that you disagree probably but, on business but, issues. But, but I should also tell you, currently, the Commissioner General of Prisons of Rwanda, General Warakabije, is a former commander of FDLR, the rebel group. The current Chief of Staff of the Reserve Army of Rwanda, General Jerome, Jerome is a former chief intelligence, chief of military intelligence of the FDLR rebel group. Maybe I don't know, just hold a second. I'm yes. trying to give you examples because, you see, I think that people in Uganda are not informed. The executive assistant to the first lady of Rwanda, Mrs. Janet Kagame, is a daughter of Theodore Sindikubwabo. Theodore Sindikubwabo was the president of Rwanda during the genocide. So to say that the leadership in Rwanda is intolerant of criticism when the leadership of Rwanda is working with some of its most vicious enemies previously. No, and now they've reconciled. The, the that something that you need all to, of us must be celebrating the that. Is, mm. The issue is, you say the people of Uganda are not informed. Maybe some are not informed, some are informed. Because when you talk about Nyamwasa who was shot, we know about it. When we talk about Karegea who has been slain, and the biggest suspect is probably the president or the president of Rwanda or the government of Rwanda. Mm -hmm. That is information that is a fact. Now, for me, my worry is, and I think that is the concern of everybody out there, where does this leave Uganda in all this? Well, mess? let me put it this way, that whenever a major political figure dies, even when President Kennedy died in the United States, when Malcolm X was killed, when Martin Luther King was killed, the government of the United States was accused of masterminding the death. So it should not surprise us. When Nebanda died in Uganda the other day, when Mayombo died, when so many people died, they accused I the government. I thought those were different scenarios of death. Well, this is what I'm trying to explain to you, that whenever there is a person who is... This one, the foreign affairs minister is saying we shall not sympathize with people who are our enemies, and she says it officially. No, but the government of Rwanda had declared uh, Patrick a terrorist, had taken him to court. And they accused him of hold, even hold a second, bombs Ch and all Charles, that. perhaps you may need to, be, to receive some information before you interrupt me. One, the government of Rwanda had officially declared him a terrorist, had taken a, a case to court and charged him with terrorism and treason, and had even sentenced him, I think, to life imprisonment. That's one. Two, the government of Rwanda had submitted evidence of uh, Patrick Karajaya's involvement in what is called rebellion and terrorism in Rwanda. Well, listen, Andrew, listen, to the government of South Africa. Of clan, and we have asked, run out of yes, time. And but let me, finish this. let me finish this. Let me finish this. And ask for extradition. And, uh, that was Newsnight tonight. Thank you so much, Andrew.